Team of the Year carries on with the Women's Team of the Year now released. We've also got some brand new Hutverse cards, and technically, you can still pull the Male Team of the Year. Let's get into it. So let's start first with your winners of the Women's Team of the Year. From the USA, we've got Hillary Knight, Taylor Heisey, Carolyn Harvey, and Aaron Frankel and Nett. From Team Canada, we've got Sarah Fillier, and Finland's Jenny Hirokoski will round out our six winners for this year's women's team of the year first things first let's break down our six new winners on left defense we've got the 92 carolyn harvey 58161 with offensive defenseman as well as enforcer defenseman which which she can activate by herself which would give her plus two to speed getting her speed up to 94 combine that with speed boost she'll be at 96 with the final synergy slot, I'd probably go with something like checking boost to try and jack up the body checking just a little higher. She's got gold elite edges, silver 1T, wheels, quick pick, as well as heat seeker and shutdown. So a really nice mix of abilities as well. The one thing I will say that I'm a little curious about is the fact that they just did not manually go and bump up her shot power. This was an issue early last year that a lot of the women defenseman cards had extremely low shot power and you can notice it in game like they don't get to the net very quickly and while accuracy is real nice when you go to take a one-timer it needs to you know kind of be a one-timer however she's got great hands and again with that enforcer defenseman slot being activated by herself can get really high skating as well our other defenseman is the left-handed jenny hirakoski 55137 again can activate enforcer defenseman meaning that she gets up to 95 speed the middle slot does include speed boost so that would be 97 and that third slot is more than likely again something you want to put checking boost on to get that up into the mid 90s she's got gold shutdown which in my opinion is the best or one of the best defensive zone abilities in the game as well as born leader seeing eye no contest thunderclap and elite edges so again a good nice mix of abilities you probably want to activate thunderclap if you are going to use her card just to give that shot a little bit of an edge but again attribute wise and ability wise great card across the board in net we've got aaron frankel and again it is going to be awfully tough to use her card as well as some of the other women team of the year cards uh when it comes to competitive gameplay you are just going to be at a, a major disadvantage in that aspect simply because at five foot five while well, she is no doubt one of the best women goaltenders in the world the way that the game is played in terms of nhl 24 any shot upstairs is more than likely just going to go in with everyone having high nine shooting attributes got light work as well as instincts butterfly effect post to post showstopper as well as energizer so all of the abilities that you are looking for you're more than likely fine if you are an offline player but online expect it to be uh, pretty tough when it comes to using her effectively at the high end of the game sarah philly is the lone winner from canada 55130 with sniper forward as well as playmaking power and two-way forward middle synergy will allow you to activate speed boost in the middle there to get her up to 96 speed and that third one again is checking boost playmaking boost and shooting boost she has gold unstoppable force to make up for the smaller stature as well as make it snappy wheels elite edges backhand beauty and puck on a string so up to 96 speed but again it's the shot power i just really uh have to question a little bit in terms of the maneuvering around of ability she does have good body checking at 92 and a good face-off rating up at 93 is more than likely going to be a really good stick handle with puck on a string as well taylor heiss is up next 5 10 160 sniper forward as well as playmaking power and two-way forward speed boost as well as all the others they remain almost identical across the board there speed boost will get her up to 93 as well as gold unstoppable force bounce back with which very rarely do you get injured in hockey ultimate, so kind of there, but it is only one ability point. Make it snappy, wheels, puck on a string, and elite edges. Again, shot power in the mid-80s. Hand stats are almost maxed, which is nice. Even with shooting boost, sniper forward combo, her shot power doesn't touch 90. Does have 96 face-offs, though, which would make her viable there. And great skating stats as well in terms of agility as well as endurance and balance. And lastly, Hillary Knight, 5'11", 172. And the big thing here is that she's got Enforcer forward meaning that if you are a Matthew Kachuk team of the year owner you could grab Hillary Knight's team of the year and you will be able to activate Enforcer Forward by yourself with those two cards which would be a big boost Enforcer Forward to get up to 94 and then obviously you can go speed boost to get the 96. Gold Wheels, Born Leader, 1T Elite Edges, Make It Snappy and Unstoppable Force so normal slew of good offensive abilities, mid middle hand stats at around 
95. And again, good shooting stats here. She has good shot power. I've used Hillary Knight's X Factor card for about the first month of the game, and it was a very, very good card. If you are a Hillary Knight X Factor owner and you have her already powered up to the max, I'd probably recommend switching it over to this Team of the Year version, especially if you have Matthew Kachuk's Team of the Year. And we're also going to talk about a major discount that we've got in Week 2. So with Week 2 of Team of the Year, we did get a new objective path, and that includes a lot of new objectives, including 20 Deeks with any player. We'll get you an 83 Hut versus Brian Campbell card. We'll touch on that in just a little bit. This will allow you to complete the games played and other objectives that are required to get Team of the Year collectibles, which is pretty nice, as you at least get this one for completely free, unlike Week 1. Now, at the end of this objective path, you will end up with 8 Team of the Year collectibles, including 7 more for completing the path for a total of 15. That is a massive discount when it comes to the value. Again, remember that every collectible was going for about 22,000 coins per Team of the Year collectible. You're looking at about 330k they're giving away here in Week 2. Now we will also get another objective path for all of the Hutverse items, and the 5 Hutverse cards that we had in Week 1, they all count towards your games played for this as well. So if you are able to collect the new 5 that we've got this week, as well as Brian Campbell, you're able to get the games done in literally half the time. Now when it comes to the Team of the Year sets for Week 2, there is only Week 2. You are no longer able to make any of the Week 1 Men Team of the Year items, which is normal for the Team of the Year event. So if you missed your boat on that, unfortunately, you won't be able to make them again. However, again, more on how to get them still in just a little bit. The cost in terms of collectibles remains exactly the same. So an 88 overall will net you for Team of the Year collectibles and so forth all the way down. And again, the cost for each of the Team of the Year player items for the women's event is exactly the same as the men's. So again, if you are a fan of any of these female players from their respective countries, as I always say, make your favorite players. When it comes to the majority of the player base that is going to ask me, are any worth making if you are someone that worries about having the best team competitively? Really the only option that I think in terms of value, because these are still very, very expensive, is Hillary Knight's trade and set with her X Factor. Now, if you have her X Factor powered up to 92, it will cost you 22 Team of the Year collectibles like it did for all of the other events. However, if you get all of the objectives done, you only need seven more collectibles in total to get her Team of the Year version. And while there isn't a vast difference in her X Factor item to her Team of the Year item, a lot like what Kale McCars was, again, the added benefit is that she does get Enforcer forward on her Team of the Year card, especially if you have Matthew Kachuk's Team of the Year as well. But for 155,000 coins in value, and then never having to worry about having to pay for the upgrade cost for Hillary Knight for the rest of the year, I think that's fine to do. Now, for anyone wondering about those Team of the Year collectibles that you'll earn if you do not use them on a female Team of the Year player item, don't worry, there will be sets that come out afterwards that you'll be able to trade those collectibles in for packs. Again, I'm not sure what those packs would be, but they usually do include like a couple for an ultimate pack, things like that. It's all based on the value in the background economy. Now onto the Hunt Verse items for week two. Here is the free Brian Campbell. He's a left-handed winger at 5'10", 192 with playmaking forward, has 90 speed, excel, and agility across the board with playmaking forward activated. And then pretty much weak attributes all the way across, but it is a forward version of Brian Campbell. Campbell, and again, you can get this for free. That can help you working towards all of the objectives. On to the other 90 overall hut verse items. We've got the left-handed defenseman Ryan O'Reilly with two-way defenseman and offensive defenseman, as well as defensive boost and playmaking boost. Defensive boost will max out his defensive awareness. He's got 90 speed, excel, and agility, as well as balance across the board. Stick him up, seeing eye, quick pick, and in reverse, so some fun abilities as well to go with the defensive version of Ryan O'Reilly. His D partner is the 90 Alex O'Reilly. Ovechkin, offensive defenseman, as well as checking boost and shooting boost, gold 1T, truculence, back at you, and thunderclap. So some hilariously fun abilities. 91 speed, excel, and agility, 94 balance, but only 85 defensive awareness. That is very low for this stage of the game. And again, defensive awareness is the attribute that dictates how well your players will intercept passes. So keep that in mind. But he's 6'3", 238 with silver truculence and 91 speed. This is going to be a great right-handed defenseman card. At forward, we've got the nice. Andy Aaron Ekblad, 6'4", 215 with sniper forward and playmaking forward, as well as playmaking boost and shooting boost. Gold make it snappy, backhand beauty, tape to tape, and elite edges. 91 speed and excel, 90 agility, mid 90 shot, 90 defensive awareness, 90 body checking, and again, 6'4", 215, making him one of the more impactful right-handed winger cards in the game. Then we've got one that really makes sense. The right-handed Brent Burns, 6'5", 230-pound 
right winger. He's got power forward and two-way forward, as well as shooting boost and checking boost. Gold total eclipse, which I love. He's got close quarters, a big rig, and a big tipper. So just a very fun card when it comes to all of the abilities. And he's 6'5", 230. 91 speed, excel, agility, 90 balance. Only 85 body checking, but he's so big it doesn't matter. And he's got hand stats that are all above 90. Again, total eclipse will light up under your player every time that a goalie is in a screen state, giving you a unique advantage if you are to get like a line together that has all gold total eclipse. And lastly, the 90 Chris Pronger with power forward, defensive boost, and shooting boost. 6'6", 220, centerman with gold on style force, no contest, off the rush, and truculence, max defensive awareness, 94 faceoff with defensive boost activated, 90 speed, 90 excel, 92 agility, and 90 balance. His hand stats are awfully rough though, so if you are anyone that carries the puck and goes left and right, a lot of movements with the stick, it's going to be a little tougher for you, but this is a massive center win to go along with Shea Weber from week one. Now, I've been alluding to the fact that you can still get the male team of the year items. If you go to the store, it was confirmed by EA that this greater chance team of the year pack for week two, which states 25 items, greater chance at pulling a previously released team of the year player, means any previously released team of the year player, including all of the men from week one. It's going to cost you 150,000 coins or 3,000 points, which is roughly $30 Canadian. I would never recommend that, but if you are dead set on trying to pull a male team of the year item that you no longer can get, this would be the only way how to do it. Again, would never recommend it, but just wanted to let you guys know that that is an option. Lastly, want to touch on our first team of the year upgrade. For Connor McDavid's insane goal last night, he has a 93 play of the year that has sniper forward and playmaking forward, as well as playmaking boost, shooting boost, and agile dangler boost. 97 speed, excel, and agility across the board. Gold all alone for his goal, as well as close quarters, puck on a string, and unstoppable force. All Connor McDavid cards are incredible. However, that does mean that his team of the year does upgrade as well. So no skating increase on the bump up to 93, which means that his 94 will get a skating increase. But he does get a face-off rating that will increase a little bit. So if you are playing him at center and run defensive boost and two-way forward, you can almost max out his face-off rating. So again, something to keep in mind there. So that is going to do it for the week two team of the year breakdown. I'll be back with a ranking video as well as a ranking video for the new hut verse items as well for anyone interested in that so thank you again for following along the channel i'll see you next time have a good one